This test 12. So please come along to Edison Park at 1 p.m. on Sunday the 16th to celebrate Woden's 60th birthday. We'll have some great bands playing, Punch and Mama from South American music, and we will have uh, some blues, and we'll have some young girls that have got a four-piece band that are at Canberra College. So in between that, we'll have some singing and some DJing. We'll have an arts market. We'll have food, barbecue, we'll have kids' activities, uh, we'll have a wildlife walk, we're going to have a history display about the history of Woden, and just a little bit about that, why we're celebrating 1962. So in the 60s, the Canberra Times reported plans for the Woden district to be home to 60,000 people, and that development of Woden Canberra's first town centre indicated a move towards decentralisation. So Belkanem was to follow, then Togonong, and then Gangalan. So in May 1962, the contract was awarded for engineering works in Canberra. Uh, it's a, in Canberra's new satellite city. It included roadworks, curbs, gutters, sewerage, drainage, and water supply for 447 residential blocks, a school, and a shopping centre in Hughes. So, you know, once you see tractors on the ground doing stuff, that's, it's kicked off. Um, in September 1962, the Minister of State for the Interior named the suburbs Hughes and, and Curtin after William Morris Hughes, who was the Prime Minister from 1915 to 1923, and John Joseph Curtin, who was the Prime Minister from 42 to 45. And in December 1962, the first contract for building houses in Hughes was awarded. So we're celebrating all that activity in the beginning of Woden in 1962. Over the following years, Woden suburbs were released, and many of our parents bought land in the restricted auctions, which provided a single block to people who had not held a residential lease in the ACT in the previous two years. And when I was typing this up, I couldn't help it. I rang my dad, dad in the middle of the night, like at 10 o'clock, and said, Dad, did, uh, was your block one of these restricted leases? And he said, yes. Um, so by the early 1970s, the Woden Town Centre was underway and public service offices and community facilities such as Philip Oval and the Philip Pool continued to be built. And in every early photo you look of Woden, Philip Oval is there. Um, so come along and celebrate in Edison Park with us. It'll be good. Um, so uh, our first presentation tonight will be on the CIT. Uh, the new Woden CIT is very exciting because it provides an opportunity to bring activity and community life to the core of Woden. Of course, educational outcomes are the priority. However, a government-owned building in the centre of Woden allows for planning and investment in public space and the arts to create a destination that attracts people day and night. So some of the things that we'd like to see in the planning for the CIT is a great sunny public space, 
uh, where we can have events and markets and where the people can get together. We'd like to see art and music in a public facility to enrich uh, community and student life. And we'd love to, um, to think about how all this can create a vibrant day and night economy with active commercial spaces creating vibrant street life. So, can we go to my pickies? I'll just show a quick pick and then we'll get on with the presentations. If this doesn't work, we'll just get on with the presentations. What about going? Get it right, because it's in the way. And then people up there have made it, I think. The first ones that fly out, and then they should be they should just unroll. So from the first one? Yeah. Oh no, no. Oh no, no, from that one. Yeah, they should just roll across. Can online they see everything? No, we're still seeing the purple you throw. All I'm seeing is the purple you throw it. Oh, is the share screen? No, 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 there's two, should be two screens. Well, should be able to see two screens. That's all I can see on live. Did you go to the other picture? The other picture. Oh, the other picture that says Fiona. Um, okay, beyond. Why don't we stop sharing and share that again and see what happens? Oh, well, there's a lot of people online on the Zoom. Screen two should. Yeah, no. Well, what about sharing that one that way? Anyway, sharing is our bugbear at the moment. I want to share some of those pickies. We thought we had that sharing working. Zoom's just looking at the room. Yeah, that's yeah. Wine. Uh, we have uh, we've got Rollo on. I'm on Facebook Live, and there's Rollo. Rollo's waving. <laughs> All right. Well, we, we tried to plonk them onto. What about sharing that one and see what happens? Oh, it's too crazy. And then can you scroll to the right? Oh. And move it onto screen two, maybe. I don't know. Can you see? We're now at the 60th birthday, which we didn't have before. All right. That's oh, a stunning. Can you see something oh, yeah, else? Zoom's got some pictures up. Yep. Oh, beauty. Yeah, not the same as that. That's sharing it. Yeah, this extended screen has not been shared properly. Should be screen two. How do you do it? Oh, damn. Maybe if we stop. Yeah, there we go. I think it's sharing one. You wouldn't think after all these years of doing Zoom, we could still sort of stuff it up. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Um, maybe we just don't extend the screens and we just have the same thing. Just go to not extend. I'll, I'll just not extend them, change it. No, I don't think I like Windows 11, but I'll look at that. All right, hang on. Let's just do this and do that. Yeah, but that, you had it all set up there for that. Windows 2. Duplicate. There you go. There's the Zoom people. Now, if we share the screen, oh shit. <laughs> right, and then we go into your folder. We had all this right. Just mm -hmm. a minute ago. Oh, well. Now, can you move through that thing? Yes. 
yeah, yeah. But it's not sharing up there. Why is it not doing it up there? I don't know. Anyway, if you've got your phone on, go into the meeting. You can see it on your phone. <laughs> um, that I have changed Why is this. That not I don't know. Did you just have a duplicate of the screen? Yeah, that's what I changed it to. Oh, hang on. Duplicate the screen. Yeah, it'll just keep changing. Keep changes. All right, fingers crossed. Let's try this. Fingers crossed. Go to your folder. Is it your folders open? See, I don't know what you don't know what it's open and what's not. No, no, no. Where's your folder? Oh, oh dear. Hang on one sec. Here we go. Woohoo, it did it. Looking like an IT. That it's not live online. And it's not got the photos I wanted. So never mind. We'll just keep practicing. What I wanted to show you, which is not up there, is on the ABC the other night, there was um, an article about Woden, about how Woden is changing. And it had some stacked images of the Hellenic Club, the car park between the Hellenic Club and the Grand Central, you know, how tall that will be. Um, Wover on the corner of Launceston and Melrose, um, the Melrose, which is opposite Albert, Alexander and Albemarle, and it sort of showed um, how big they will all be. There's also um, the Shard on Brewer Street, there's the towers behind the police station, there's, uh, there's a lot going on. And I guess the point is, how do we make sure that we have got all this planning cohesive and all working together? Because what we see is a lot of um, piecemeal, like each development seems to be individual. And we don't have an image of what it's all gonna be like at the end in like 15 years, when all these towers have gone in, where is gonna be our public space? <laughs> like Burley Griffin. Um, this was our recreation precinct. So that was our basketball stadium and the bowling greens and the tennis courts and the YMCA and the pitch and putt was over there. And this is the pool and the ice skating, but they're on their way out too. So the only thing left in the recreation precinct is the um, squash courts. Philip Oval is gated, you can't get in there and kick a footy around with your kids. So we've lost our recreation precinct. We've lost our public space, our town square is zone for 28 storeys around its perimeter. And I don't think it's a terrible thing to do to ask, what are the kids in the CIT gonna do? Where are they gonna go? There's no recreation left. We've got clubs, we've got gaming venues. So they can come here, they can go to the Hellenic Club. Whopping big, huge gaming clubs. Is this room here what, where the kids will come to do music? And, or will it be inside the Hellenic Club in that whopping big gaming venue? Is that where the kids will go to, to for their culture? Where's the life on the streets? Where's the vibe in Woden? What is the plan? And if anybody can tell me, please tell me. Because to date, I have looked a lot at this and I cannot see that North Plaza, which is a basically, you know, okay, it's a sunny green place. We'll take it. We'll take green plants. We'll take any bit of green bit we can get. But when you look at the images, it's primarily a path with some garden beds, with some trees in there for sure. But it's not where the focal point of Woden will be with have active, to activate commercial areas around it, to bring life, markets, events, that sort of thing into that North Plaza. We can do better than that. And so these are the questions that we are asking about where will be the public focal point, the public space where we can have events and markets? So, 
so um, we will see if we can now get the CIT presentation. No, those aren't the ones. They're the wrong ones. These are the ones I wanted to get, but see, I, you can't really see. They're so small, but that's the blocking around the Hellenic Club. That's the blocking around. Oh, there you go. Okay, if we can quickly whip through it, like that's the Hellenic Club. And this is the big car park between the Hellenic Club and the um, Grand Central. I don't know why it's so small, actually, because it's zoned for 16 stories. Um, all right, we'll just whip through these if they work. No. Not in all, actually. Never mind. Yeah. Just flip. No, wrong ones. This one is actually about the schools. I digress, but there is no school around, um, no primary school around, Chifley. Oh, well, never mind. That's um, that's Wova. That's the Melrose opposite. But every spare space is being filled up. And this is what the youth foyer is doing too. We, don't get me wrong, we welcome the youth foyer. The youth foyer looks after vulnerable young people. And of course we look after young vulnerable young people. And of course we want them to stay in education. And of course we want them in Woden doing that. But... Is the youth boy in the right place? Because it seems to be just, oh, there's a space, let's put it there. And I'm not clear on what the planning is for all this. So anyway, given that um, I can't get my slides going, we might as well get the, um, the CIT one going. Because that will scroll through. Go to, sorry, sorry. There it is. You just have to press this thing down here. Is it that one? Ta -da. No, da -da -da. Is it on there? No. On yours? No, no, no. Just next to it. Just, just quickly um, come back and share the. Share screen. Where'd it go? I don't want to have you It's a mystery. I don't know. I've been doing this for so long, I still can't work it out. Where the, where's the screen? Um, can we open up? It's either the PowerPoint. Can we? And then, yeah, once this goes into, yeah, we just okay. Now go to Zoom. It's not the one we want, though. Okay. Share screen. Yeah, it's not the one we want. Yeah, that's the one we want. We need to open it up. Is that it? Yeah, it is open. Okay, now go to Zoom. Yeah, but it's not in there. Yeah, that's it. Press share on the right. Yeah, but it's not showing. We'll just press share and see what happens. Go back into Zoom and press share and see what happens. Is that better? Yeah, that's no, oh, not for me. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we've got it. Okay. Is it too much? Oh, yeah, we have that one's in the room and that one's online. Okay. One thing like getting there in the end. Sure. <laughs> Um, hi everyone, um, my name is Bernadette Brennan. Um, I'm from Major Projects Canberra and um, I work in stakeholder engagement and communications. Um, I'm just going to run through what we're going to hear tonight from um, ACT government. Um, first of all, thanks to the Wen Valley Community Council, Fiona, for inviting us along. Um, we've been talking to the council for um, a long time about this project and we are grateful and welcoming the feedback. Um, so first of all, tonight, we're going to hear from um, Ben Owen from Lendlease, who's going to talk about uh, the CRT uh, campus building. Um, we're going to hear from James Sorallo from our Community Services Directorate, who's going to be talking about youth foyers and the concept around the youth foyer to give um, the youth foyer project a bit more context for everybody. Uh, and then we're going to hear from Rod Baxter from EPSDD, who's going to um, talk about the community centre, Warden Community Centre. 
Um, we're going to see all the presentations first and then hold questions to the end. Um, and then we can have a discussion and questions. So, um, Ben, if you want to come on down. Second. No worries. Uh, thanks, Bernie, and thanks, Fiona. And hi, everyone. My name is um, Ben from Nunlease. I'd like to start by also acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land, the Ngunnawal people, and pay my respect to elders past, present and emerging. I'm going to start by saying I hate presenting, but I do like having a conversation. So I know people, I know we talked about questions at the end, but I'm open to a couple coming my way because it helps break up um, my presentation a little bit. So please, um, if something is not clear around what I present, uh, stop me. Um, I've been working on the job for around about a year, uh, actually longer from the start of our tender process. So there's also, you know, in my brain, some assumed kind of knowledge around just because I'm so deep into it. So sometimes I skip things that may not, you know, may not be obvious. So please slow me if you need to, but otherwise um, we'll go through a design presentation. So I think if you go to the next slide, this slide is just to um, give everyone their bearings around where the proposed site is within Woden. Now, uh, I'm sure you're all familiar, but basically it's in the location of the existing bus interchange. So we've got Grand Central Towers to uh, the north um, and uh, Woden Town Square to the west and the majority of the west field to the south, to southwest from where the site is. Um, what I'll start by saying is from our perspective, and I listened to, to um, what Fiona said before, and I've had a number of, we've had a couple of conversations around the project. From my perspective, we are equally passionate around creating a great urban realm for Woden. Um, for background, as Fiona knows, I'm, I until recently lived in Woden. I've just moved to Borough, so that, that I lost a few points um, from that respect. But I'm a passionate Canberran, and I think what we, I assume, will all agree on is that the current urban realm within Woden needs improvement. And so what we hope for this project is that it is a catalyst development to help inspire, you know, it's a starting point, but it will also help um, inspire better development around it. And one of the things that we have been considering, and to Fiona's point before, is how this project ties into its current um, environment, but also how it responds to future environments. So we'll go through a bit of that um, through this presentation. Uh, onto the next slide, I think, Touching on the history of Woden, so we, we picked up this master plan from 1968. This is one of the original uh, master plans for Woden and some key features um, of Woden is the Woden Town Square, which is located here, an east-west boulevard, which basically runs through to the, to, um, uh, uh, the Woden Town um, Park across the other side and back through the Woden Town Square. Uh, a forecourt, which was located in this area, which then also created some north-south um, connection through Woden. So this was the original plan for Woden. I think it's fair to say, and Fiona, correct me if you're wrong, I don't think this was ever actually achieved. Before the forecourt was built, there was a... It was partly achieved. Yeah. I mean, the forecourt wasn't yeah. Yeah. Alexander and Albemarle yeah. were well and truly built. Yeah. And the mall and the library, it was yeah. partially achieved. I, I should clarify the point. So it's more around the site where CIT Woden is proposed. So the forecourt never really came into existence. The East West Boulevard was eroded pretty quickly with the, um, you know, subsequent master plans that happened through the site. One of the things, if I go to the next slide, One of the things that we actually think that CRT Woden does is establish some of the principles and a lot of the, the key principles which existed in the early uh, master plan. So we are re-establishing an east-west link. That east-west link hasn't been there since the, since the interchange was there. Essentially, you know, the direct connectivity from the Woden Town Park through uh, to the east and across the road has not existed for, you know, 30, 40 years. 
this so the CLT won't actually re-establishes that link. The forecourt, we don't quite have the forecourt as originally proposed, but we do have a significant and large urban space, which we call West Plaza, which is located uh, in this part of the site. That looks good like that. Yes. <laughs> So we'll get, to the, we'll get to the design images later, but I just wanted to put this up because we have um, gone back and had a look at, you know, what the intent of the original planning for Woden was. Again, a lot of that was not achieved around this site in particular, but had a look at how we can um, uh, reference that and try and uh, bring back some of, the, some of the original principles that form part of the Woden Town plan back in 1968. Sorry, um, just with that, obviously, both that we were not behind to that part. Yep. So look at the new construction that's going on and the high items. How do you get sun and light into the meter yep. in those that east-west corridor where it's all yep. going to be built up? Yep. How how are you meant to get the light into that east-west corridor when um those buildings are going to be so high? Yep on either side. So I've got a slide that'll, so I've got some shadow diagrams um, a little bit later, which I'll respond to, to show how that works. Okay. Can anyone ask a question? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. So, no, that's sorry. okay, but you may have to wave or something. So that the online people can hear. All right, so we'll go on to the next slide, if we can. So look, this is, um, this is a plan and we've got some more, the fine ones now, but I just want to kind of start with um with where we started with some sketch images around activation in the public realm, which we saw as a core part of this project. So for Lend Lease, we have a number of, of objectives which we're trying to achieve. The CIT building is obviously an educational building and it serves a purpose for CIT. We have the youth fire, which is um uh, this presentation on a bit later, so we'll go into a bit more detail. But we have the youth foyer, but we also have um, a significant public realm. So there's about 14,000 square metres of external space as part of this development. And it is designed for everybody. So it is designed, yes, for CIT staff and students. It is designed for the residents of the youth foyer, but equally it is designed for the public. And if we get that interaction right, everyone wins from that. CIT wins, the public wins, and, and um, community wins. So what we have been focused on around activation from a building perspective is how do we, um, and we spend a lot of time with CITs, how do we drive their active functionality down to the ground plane to create um, interest and activation and interaction with the public? And we spent a lot of time going through the brief around what CIT require to deliver their training curriculum and then worked out what are the, what is the most appropriate functions to bring down to the ground plane to allow the interaction to occur between public and CIT. And what some of you may be aware of, uh, some of you may be aware of, but some others may not be, is that CIT as part of their training actually have a significant amount of training which involves, you know, essentially customer service. So as an example, for those, um, uh, some of you may have been to the restaurant out at Reed, which is a training kitchen that is now being, uh, I'll stand away from that speaker, that is now being located uh, here in Woden. Uh, Hair and Beauty, which is, you know, uh, a training function that CRT provide, there is a public, essentially, salon, which is used for public to be able to go to, but also for training. So we went through all those uses, and I might just go through those quickly and talk through what we're positioned, where and why, and and why we think that um, will drive some good activation. So on the north side of the site, which is facing Northern Plaza, so Northern, so just to get bearings, Northern Plaza is up there. I'm not tall enough, but I think um, people can see it. That is one of the locations on the site which gets year-round sun, and I'll come back to the shadow diagram. So it is an important um, uh, location that we think having a great um, outdoor space is important. One of the what we've tried to do and, and, and what creates good activation is where the inside and outside kind of blurs. So what we are trying to do is, is match inside functionality with the opportunity outside. So inside the building in that, in that location, there will be a cafe, a gallery and a bookshop. 
they will all include um, interaction to the public. And the idea being, if you can imagine the gallery, if, you know, in the right weather conditions, the gallery can actually spill from inside the building to outside the building at the Northern Plaza. There's an opportunity for someone waiting for a bus, as an example, to go, you know, go into the bookshop, you know, buy a book, get a coffee, and enjoy the Northern Plaza. So it is an interaction space where there will be public interaction available um, in that location. Yep. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, no, I was just asking about that because um, I think I, on the WebEx, I talked about um, the idea behind the, the Bell Connor was have an indoor waiting area with real time information. Now we've had some wet weather, you know. Um, so if people need to escape, they well, obviously that overhang there at the front north, they'll wait there, yep. but they'll also wait underneath that walkway through there. But there's no real, you, you won't see the real time information. So there really needs to be some sort of lounge or something like that, where that can be incorporated into that space with real time information. Yeah, I think one of the things, and we don't spend a lot of time today on the interchange scope of work, so just focus this presentation on, on the building, but we do have the platforms which form part of the interchange. So there's you know, a number of platforms, and those platforms will incorporate signage and information for commuters as well around. Um, you know, around timetables or information around what's, um, you know, what's happening in the network. And that does provide opportunity to get out of the, the weather, essentially. So the intent... Yeah. Not, there's not enough. No. Sorry, there's not enough weather protection, really. Okay. We get, um, and we'll take that feedback on board and we'll, we'll consider it. Currently... Um, DA is already in it. So for package two? For, for the interchange? Yeah. Yes. So that was the intent of the Northern Plaza around creating a location for gallery, cafe, bookshop to be able to spill outside. We have hair and beauty entry into a lobby for a salon facing along the interchange, a maker space, which is a creative space for uh, students um, through uh, uh, the portal, which runs along the East West Boulevard. Um, over on the Northern elevation of the Southern component of the building, we saw this boulevard as being a really key activation um, strip. I just wanted to note, um, within the shelters, there's extra provision for weather protection. Uh, so it's not generally within the building, but it actually is um, yeah, better. In the DA, it, there is better weather protection in the shelters themselves. OK. Thank you. So. In this area of the building is where we've located the restaurant, um, the bakery kitchen, and a commercial bar, which all form part of CIT's training. And the intent there, again, in responding with the landscape design is providing an opportunity for the inside and outside to blur, and for those retail functions to basically spill outside from CIT and into the public realm. The positioning of those functions has also been deliberate and ties back into the shadow diagrams, which I will again get to in a minute. Um, so number six and seven, where the first floor outdoor area is, you know, and a first floor outdoor area is terrific. But underneath that six and seven, that's actually at ground level building. Yes. So that's not where that six and seven is on the north side of the restaurant. That is actually building. That's the first floor that's green. No, 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 that's public realm. Okay, but is it, it's ground floor? Please. Ground floor. The, the, the only, first floor sits above here. So I'll show you in the perspectives a little bit later. So this is all ground floor. We, we do deal with a change in level. So we've got the building at one level and a slight grade across the side. So this is like three steps and a ramp. So it is slightly sunken, but only by, you know, less than the height of that, that stage. Okay, so that was the intent around um, around the northern elevation um, through here. And then in the public realm, and I think it might be on the next slide, sorry, Bernie, if you skip to that. So what this diagram tries to do is indicate the opportunities for how the public realm can be used um, after it's delivered. So there are a range of opportunities that, that we have identified, and some of these are still up. Uh, work in progress. But as an example, 
over in the Northern Plaza, the design has been designed to contemplate it being used as a, either a flexible event space or for CRT and outdoor learning space in terms of how that has been designed. We have a uh, proposal to have a welcome to, uh, to country um, as you walk into the precinct and as you come off Callum Street going into the boulevard. There is the retail spill out areas, which I mentioned before. So fronting on the restaurant, commercial bar, cafe, gallery, uh, bookshop. Um, other flexible and outdoor learning spaces. And we do have a proposal, which we're still currently testing, but to be able to use the boulevard as flexible mar uh, market spaces. But also we currently have a road, obviously, that goes through Western Plaza by working through opportunities to actually be able to close Western Plaza for events. And you can spill out with market spaces running through that. So this is a shared zone, I shouldn't call it a road, but it is, it, you know, provides traffic access, but it's a shared zone, pedestrians are prioritised. But we see this Western Plaza as a really great opportunity to be able to have, you know, as I say, some of the markets, events, and it is a space, for, as I said before, for everyone, for public, CIT, um, youth foyer residents. What size? what size is the Western Plaza? I need to come back to you, but what I can tell you is that overall, I'm going to say 70 by 40. As a, that's my estimate. So I can go about 70 metres this way, 40 metres this way. So that's about 2,800 square metres overall. Uh, it would be bigger than this room, but it, but the overall public realm is 14,000 square metres. So it is, it is actually quite significant in area in terms of the public space and landscaping that is being provided as part of the project. Oh, there's another question. Yep. No, sorry. Um... Martin's answered that. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. I'm just wondering why we couldn't put the youth foyer up in the North Plaza and have a bit of a bigger space. I mean, it seems like a no-brainer, considering particularly that there's going to be overshadowing from Grand Central. I just cannot see the logic of putting the youth foyer right there. Yeah. I, I think from our perspective, we explored a range of options around where the youth foyer could go. What we thought was important was... The North Plaza provides um, a location which does get year round sun. And there is a challenge in you know, significant parts of the precinct in the middle of winter. It's actually pretty good in, and, and again, I know I keep saying, but we'll get to the uh, shadow diagram. Um, and also spatially the youth foyer, you know, the area where we have the Northern Plaza is actually quite a small area and the footprint of the youth foyer exceeds um, the space. So what we were trying to, the, the intent behind it was to provide that you know, year round sunny space as a as an outdoor activation space. And the youth foyer was um, positioned um, on this side of the building, essentially. What what about where the, the youth centre currently is, which is just the other side of Callum Street? Mm. Can I maybe park that question to a future presentation on why the youth foyer is located as part of this project? Because CSD will respond to that. Um, and I guess from an analysis perspective, currently, our brief is to provide the youth foyer on this side. And we did go and explore a range of options and have landed on this side as being the preferred site, all things considered, or the preferred location. One of the things we did do, and I'll touch on the youth foyer quickly, from when we started at the reference design, which um, you may or may not have seen, but one of the key things we did want to do was actually separate the youth foyer away from the CIT building for a number of reasons. One, we wanted to provide some connectivity down to the south along Bradley Street. Um, and secondly, also, because I think it enabled us to, to create, you know, a proper home for the residents of the youth foyer as opposed to a resident stuck to a, you know, a government building, essentially. Do you have a map that shows... Yep. Yeah, can you write yeah. that? that map goes down... Just to be on one. ...towards Bradley Street. Well, how far is that sort of... Like that. The, um, taxi yeah, I want to see down further. So, yeah. I don't know how to get rid of that because that kind of covers some of what Bradley Street looks like. Maybe you can drag it to the top, Martin. 
the that um sharing thing. Drag that away and drag the other one away. That's better. Nice work. So where is Bradley Street? So Bradley Street is here. That is Bradley Street with the slip lane in. So our our scope essentially runs along that curb of Bradley. Sure. Taxi you know, rank Bradley, sits there. That's not Bradley. Yeah. No, that's, that's not Bradley. That's, that's Neptune, isn't it? Yeah, no, yeah, that, is that is Bradley Street. That is Bradley Street. Does it turn a corner, does it? Yeah, it's Bradley Street, Street, and then it turns. Down We've got some more refined plans we'll show you in a minute, but yeah, right. it turns down there. And so, oh, what? Okay. Well, yes, yeah. uh, okay. that's yeah. further down here. This is the taxi rank in this location. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the car park at the bottom. So that's a new car park over here. That that black line is a new building. This black line? No, no, no. Over where you taxi were, near, next to the taxi rank, that blank line, which I assumed was an existing building. That's just our boundary. So that 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 is just the edge of our site. So this is where the block boundary is. So we're proposing to develop inside the boundary. This the taxi rank is actually a different block. And so West, uh, you know, the corner of um, Westfield will be kind of indicatively here. Let me get to, I've got some better plans later. It might explain that a little bit better. All right, so if we go to the next slide, Bernie. Yeah, cool. Shadow diagram. So shadow diagrams, if you go, basically what we run is, summer, um, autumn, spring, winter, at morning, um, middle of the day and afternoon to show um, the shadowing across the site. What you will see, it's kind of tricky to know where to start. I'll start at summer and we'll just go uh, around. So in summer, as you'd expect, the vast majority of the site actually gets a lot of sun for a lot of the time, which can actually create its own problems. That's another, I know people obviously talk about um, rain, but actually providing respite from sunlight, especially in, in Canberra summers, is another important consideration of our landscape design. Can you just point out, sorry, can you point out the east-west and the north-south? Yep, so I'll, I'll, do it down, I'll do it down here. So this is Bradley Street. This is the east-west boulevard that I was talking about before. This is Northern Plaza up here, and here's Western Plaza over here. Okay. So in summer, you can see the vast majority of the time there's you know minor shadowing, but as you'd expect, you get the site gets sun, um, uh, basically summer, midday and the afternoon. In autumn, there is obviously some there's some more shadowing, um, but you actually see that it, the site gets um, still does get significant amounts of sunlight and key pockets of sunlight. Across, across the day. So one of the locations, and I can't reach up there again, but one of the locations and why we located the restaurant in this area here was because you can see in autumn, that's an area which is relatively protected from the shadowing from Grand Central Towers. So when we position those functions on the ground plane, it wasn't just positioning them, it was considering the microclimates that exist across the site in the various seasons to make sure they were as comfortable as possible. I was just wondering what part of autumn that is. Is that the beginning of autumn or the end of autumn? Uh, the, Similarly with spring. It would be middle of autumn. So these would be middle of the month. And can you confirm, I think you said that these shadow diagrams are with the development that's going to happen on the next block between the Hellenic Club and Grand Central because clearly North Plaza is the boundary that's the boundary of north plaza so yeah. talk about the can you talk about the impact of that please so, so i don't have the plans for what happens in terms of the development on that future site however what i can say is that is that in terms of the planning of that site my understanding and and perhaps the territory can respond to this later in terms of the planning constraints that are going to be put on the site when that site is sold is going to protect the Northern Plaza zone in terms of the height of the building to allow sun in. So I haven't done the shadow modeling because I don't know what the, the development looks like. However, I think it's recognized from, you know, the reason why we've, we've positioned Northern Plaza where it is, is to get the sunlight. We've got the functionality to get the sunlight. So there's a conversation around making sure that's protected in future development. 
Hi. <clears throat> I don't want to hold up the presentation anymore, but yeah. um, those winter diagrams yeah. for Grand Centre Chow are wrong. Now, if you have a look at your building, which is what what's the height of the CIT? They're five stories high, so you know you're showing a shadow, which is not not much more than what the grant uh, the CIT is. The, we actually have the Grand Central Tower shadows, and they almost touch the car park on the other side. So um, I don't know what uh, the angle in the winter is. Thirty two degrees, thirty two degrees. It's not forty five. Yep. So they're wrong. So I don't know who did those ones. Oh. Okay. Uh, I think we, we can go and verify them. I can tell you that. Oh, we can yeah. do I can send it then. Yeah. But yeah, no, yeah. that's. Yeah. Sadly, sorry. Yeah. Oh. To be honest, I don't think they are, right? So we've developed them that, you know, it's used the, there's a whole bunch of software suites that produce these. We'll go validate the inputs and make sure, but these are the shadow diagrams that that um, are based on the actual modeling of the buildings that are around. So- um, using, using, what to, using what software? I'll have to come back to you with the exact software. Well, can I just say though, the Western Plaza, yeah. most of the time it's pretty good. Even in winter, we get sun there where you, where you get no sun for autumn, spring, winter, primarily through the east-west link. In the Western Plaza, you do get it. And even in winter, you get it. It's, it's, this, it's as far as a central core area, it's, it's, it's got some sun. I, I think there's great locations all across the site, Fiona, and that's what we're trying to do with the design is, is and, the, and the quality of the location changes depending on the season and the weather conditions. So we're trying to provide flexibility in the urban realm and the design response so that it is comfortable in all conditions and it provides activation at the ground plane. But you've got to also consider the desire lines where people walk because while North Plaza will be potentially a nice little sunny spot, it's not on the desire lines where people walk around and it's not a spot that's going to be naturally activated by commercial activity all the way around it. And so we need to consider what the best sites are across a multiple of objectives. I agree. And that's what we've done, Fiona. So, so our, our focus has been prioritising because there's a, there's a strong desire line that goes down the boulevard. One of the reasons we split the youth foyer and the CIT building was to address a desire line going down Bradley Street towards the south. So that was deliberate. And we prioritise the active functions, the most active functions with the restaurant and the bar and, and some of these other elements across, across the boulevard where people are walking, okay? Northern Plaza we also saw as a key example because of its, its, um, its outlook to create a destination and create a new desire line to make people want to go there, right? So as opposed to the commuter walking past because they've got off a bus and are going, you know, wherever to go to work, it's creating somewhere where people choose to go. And that's why we have the gallery space, you know, a funky bookshop and, and the cafe there. So it's an opportunity. So people will go to destinations as well as responding to the desire line. So that is why we've tried to, to bundle the Northern Plaza area with those internal functionalities. And I think, you know, if you imagine, again, when the weather's right, but there's a gallery display on inside the gallery that spills out into the Northern Plaza. So it's an inside outside display you can get a as I say you can get a coffee I think it's a really great opportunity for Woden that location if that's the um CIT coffee area yeah. just I make the point that that's not open over summer as far as I I hear it's a student thing so it's open when the students are there and so there are quite a number of weeks of the year when the students are not there and the cafes are not open it, it, the curriculum for CRT and the semesters change, but a lot of the functionality on the on the ground plane is an all year experience, and it is continued to use for for training purposes essentially. Thanks. Um, have you done any wind modelling? Because I can tell you in winter, it doesn't matter how much sun you're getting down that, it is a wind tunnel yeah. and no one's going to be there. Yeah, so we've done, um, the answer is yes, we've done a lot of wind modelling and I actually had the report come in yesterday. So we did two scenarios for the wind modelling. One was the current um, 
the current um, situation within Woden in terms of what is currently built there. But we also picked up the future, you know, the current buildings that are currently either under construction or in other stages of DA and have run the, um, the modelling. The results are actually pretty positive, to be honest with you. And I don't have the diagram in here because, as I said, I've got it yesterday and the presentation um, was put together before that. But they categorise the wind in five key categories in relation to level of comfort in either, um, you know, sitting, um, standing, uh, strolling, um, uh, in relation to whether it's comfortable to do those things in, in the environment. We had nothing go into category four or five, which are the two worst ones. And the majority was actually one, two, and some of three. So there is a diagram. I don't have it here today and we can follow up at, a, at another section or session around what that looks like. But it is not, from all the wind models I've seen on the various jobs I've done, it is actually a really positive result in relation to what the forecast conditions are. Yep. 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 And, and there are also things in the, like, which I acknowledge um, your experience. There's also things in the current design which don't necessarily make it a you know friendly place when it's a windy day. There's very little trees, as an example, or breaks to to break up some of that wind. So, um, as I say, we do have the model. It's not presented here, but it's something we can follow up on. Um, I'm curious to the um, uh, what you've done in terms of active frontaging along along Callum Street, noting that there's going to be a future interchange there yep. uh, and a crossing across to the park. Quite a lot of work obviously has gone in, in the internal boulevards there, but what about to Callum Street? Is there much in that space? Yeah, so there's um, on the slides beforehand, there's kind of two parts. So there's the Northern Pod. So that's where we had the, um, yeah. So on the Northern Pod, we, we have the bookshop in the corner, the hair and beauty entry on Callum, this space and make a space over on, on this side. This side of the building on the southern side is predominantly the foyer um, uh, space and student common space for CIT. So it has, I guess, activation can be broken up into a few categories. There's kind of the activation where the public can go in and actually, you know, interact and go buy a coffee. But there's also some passive activation where we've got, you know, student common space, which, which, which um, will be active inside. So it's a different type of activation, I guess. It's probably less focused on direct public interaction, but it is still, you know, on dis CRT on display, common spaces and what have you. Okay. If we just go through. So landscape design, look, I won't go through, a lot of this is kind of what um, I went through previously. Probably the key point of this um, slide is to show our focus on maximizing greenery within the landscape. So, so there is significant amount of landscaping, new trees. Um, and I think that is one of the things that um, is probably sorely missed in Woden at the moment. There was a, which I know Fiona, I've presented to you before, but one of the statements from community around Woden being a, you know, concrete windy uh, space. We, we are creating significant amounts of landscaped areas as part of the development. Down the boulevard, Western Plaza in particular, um, have a slightly, um, different response in Northern Plaza where we saw it as an, an opportunity to have some proper lawn area as well. So that is um, um, the, the landscape design with it, with a key pedestrian boulevard going down uh, the East West Boulevard um, and through the shared zone up to the Woden Town Park. Burning keep going. Oh, um, about the youth yeah. foyer, will there be parking for the people that live there? underground parking or anything uh there's yeah there's no um there's no parks dedicated to um the students there are some staff car parks as part of the the um the brief but not in the youth foyer for those people who live in the youth foyer no. uh, any of the are you keeping any of the existing plantings so um thinking particularly the ones that are already planted on the northern end of the Western Plaza and where the taxi rank is? Um, I'd have to come back to you, to be honest. I don't know that answer off, offhand. If there's any existing plans that we think are uh, that we can keep, we will, we will keep them. 
Um, but I don't know, to be honest, it's probably a level of coordination that we still need to go through. All right. um, so just had some bike and travel diagram. So this is an indication at a kind of bit of a more macro level around some of the travel pathways through uh, Woden. If you go into the next um, slide. Um, and this was a, uh, this was kind of zooming in on the precinct around where we saw the key um, uh, uh, travel pathways being. So the East West Boulevard being the primary, uh, essentially pedestrian, but also um, shared zone with bikes. Um, and as you move out to, um, and we probably need to update this plan, to be honest, as you move out from the precinct, then there are some dedicated paths, which have dedicated pathways and cycle lanes out um, along Callum Street. So where is the core of Woden? Where is the beating heart? Where is the, where's the beating heart? Where's the focal point? Where is the focal point of Woden? Yeah, because each town centre was designed to have a focal point, like your Garima place, sure. you know, like what, what's, what's, what's the centre? Well, I Where think is if, you it? Go, if you go back through to the original plans, it was, it was a premise around the Woden Town Square and its connection through, down through the forecourt and through um, the East West Boulevard. So where, how come like none of these um, sort of images give any narrative around connections with the beating heart, the core? Well, I think they do. Like, I think this is the point I was trying to make originally was if you go back to the original master plan, a key area through here was part of the, the master plan. It's never existed. So, oh. so we are creating those spaces that exist. All right, let me put it this way. The vision in the 19... Uh, 2015 master plan said that the town square would be the beating heart yep. it said that's where we would meet um and it would for Woden and for the broader region we'd all meet in the town square but now seven years later it doesn't appear to have been implemented because people don't meet in the town square so what are we doing to address the beating heart and the fact that we don't have one because nobody goes there so there's certain things that you might control, Fiona, right? Mm -hmm. Currently, the Woden Town Square is not part of our scope, but what we are trying to do is re-establish the key connections which form part of the original Woden um, town planning, re-establish a key East West Boulevard. We bring a population of students and residents into the heart of the Woden, and we create an amazing public realm full of green spaces, you know, opportunities for activation, opportunities for people to... to um, you know, either, you know, get a coffee and sit down at a table which has a USB port for charging. We are creating a great space. And the idea of activation is to get people to go there, get people to stay there and get people to return. That has been what our focus has been in the development of the design. So we, we assume that the town square is still the beating heart in this whole process. Because, you know, yeah. I mean, it's in... it. it we don't want to see this being piecemeal. We want to look at it holistically. Well, so we'll, yeah. if that's what we're to assume. It, listen, again, in terms of what I can respond to, what we, yeah. what we hope this project is in Steely, it's a catalyst for, for great development. And we are trying to re-establish some of the key principles of the, of the original town plan. And we think by doing that, by creating a great access, by creating a great Western Plaza, then it makes, hopefully, Woden Town Square... Um, a more appealing place to then future develop and potentially, you know, there's probably, there might be another project there in the future. I can't comment on that, Fiona, but what I'm trying to do is re-establish those key principles, right? And what our design is trying to do to make this site fantastic and be a catalyst for the development around. I guess we just want, um, would like for yeah. the public servants yeah. that are dealing with this project to sure. brief upwards yeah. that this has got to integrate with the core of Woden which assumably is the town square, yeah. and we need to talk about and look at how that's going to work because the Woden Town Square is zoned for 28-storey buildings around its perimeter. Yeah. So it's going to be overshadowed and windy. So if it's overshadowed and windy and it's our beating heart, well, nobody's going to go there. So we're, we're setting out, what, what are we doing to succeed here? We, 
Yeah, sorry. I should have. Yeah. No, it's my fault. Yeah. Where is this um, town going to be built at on that map? It's, it's just so these are the these are the stairs that go up to it. So so that's that's it. So we've got all the so we build the whole thing. Yeah. Not going to create any of that green space there. No. Shadow. No. And that wind tunnel that it creates is not going to come down the stairs and put No. So we so well it is because it already does. That's down the block here. Uh, I think I the tree I think from you know, from my so in terms of the wind modeling, we've done the wind modeling, we'll, we'll provide that. I think to be able, people experience um, uh, landscapes partly around what the actual experience is. So, so when you're in a con when you're in the bus interchange, which is pretty ordinary, right? And and concrete and whatever else, then you also are more sensitive to the environment you're in. Having trees helps provide a windbreak, but we'll provide the wind modeling. The shadow diagrams from those other buildings don't impact this site. Right. Um, my question is about your cycleways there, the yep. throughways, and the fact that um, where the red arrow is on the left is quite a significant stairway. Is there yes. going to be any works to that to make it possible for people to actually get bikes up and down? It? There is a lift there, so it's the lift already. But there is, and when the lift's yeah. not working, yeah. So, so this is more. This was a key shared space. To your point, bikes going up into the, the town square. Okay, it's, so yeah. if I want to go from CIT to Woden Library, I have to go with the stairs, two kilometres around? I mean, that's a bit silly, really. With the stairs, it's designed into the stairs and the way you can get your bike up. So yeah. Is there, because I saw against, somebody struggling with it yesterday that couldn't do it. So, so they're carrying it up the stairs. If yeah. you go against the rail, right up the stairs. Yeah. All right, well. To the CIT, how would you get there? From where, sorry? Well, from somewhere that isn't in the centre of Woden, a car. Yeah. If you were trying to get, uh, I yep. live in Phillips, so I want yep. to, if, when I'm in a wheelchair, is it possible so, to get there? Yeah, so a key focus for us is equitable access around around the building. There's a, when you say, can you get from Philip to CIT in a wheelchair? Well, I don't know the answer, right? But I, I, I can't, yeah. hey? Well, yeah. yeah. Oh, but I bet it would be anywhere. Yes, there's disabled. Yes, there's disabled. Yes, there's disabled parking, which have formed part of the project and they form part of the estate development plan. There's four, I think, through the Western Plaza and some others through the site. So, yes, there is disabled four. through the Western Plaza and others in the Western Plaza. Yes, yep. There's also some in the, the, the basement car parking for, for CRT and, and what have you as well. So, okay. So just on the car parking. Yep. What, what about the car parking for the students? Yeah. Like, so, is it assumed that they all catch buses and or ride bikes? I think it's, I think. The intent of the brief is promoting active travel or public transport or using the paid parking that exists within the town centre. That students aren't going to be able to afford, so therefore they're not going to go to CIT. Well, yeah, I don't know if that's... I, I, I just find it fascinating that there's no parking for students at all at the site. That, that yeah. just astounds me. Mm -hmm. Sure. Oh, I don't know if it's any different to read, which is what it's replacing. Where there's, where there's yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It, there is disabled parking as part of the the process. We're talking about Yeah. What is read tape? Yeah. They've got all the parking across okay. the road. No, I, don't, I hear the feedback. I'm going to go with some moving a little bit faster because otherwise we're going to run out of time. This is zooming in through the landscape design. This is on the Northern Plaza. Um, so this is just really zoomed into what I talked about before. If we go to the next um, slide, this is again zoomed in further down uh, the East West Boulevard around the landscape design and, and um, the proposed activation through um, to the building. Um, next slide. 
And this is the Western Plaza again. So these are just zooming in on those landscaping plans that we showed before and what those opportunities um, look like. Uh, keep going. Does it have to have a Does it have to have a shared zone through it? Like if it didn't have the road through it, there'd be a lot more um, like green space and 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 be able to yeah. be used better. Um, and it wouldn't be as dangerous for older yeah. people and things like so, that. Uh, so I think there's a there's a key design exercise around making sure it's a proper shared zone and there's some strategies we'll put in place that pedestrians need to be prioritised through that space. Traffic is helping create a connection from north and south, which was one of, in the original master plans, it may not have been contemplated as vehicle traffic, but it's trying to maintain that connectivity north-south. There are also some safety benefits of having traffic going through the public realm, especially at night, because you get some passive surveillance um, um, with that as well. So I think it's around how the design responds to make sure that pedestrians are prioritised. Um, this is a, a preliminary, preliminary lighting diagram. I won't spend too much time in this, except to say that the public realm will be, you know, fully lit. So it won't be dark, you know, and that is again, part of the, the safety considerations of the public realm. All right, so going under the building itself, and I'll skip through some of these relatively quickly. Um, these are just going around some of the renders of what the building looks like. This is looking from Callum Street um, back towards um, Woden um, Town uh, Square. And what we've been focused on is really trying to maximise this um, opening through the boulevard to, to um, support that east-west connection that I talked about before. So we're looking from the... Callum. Oh, the bus from Callum Street, the yeah. bus interchange. Yes. That's where I'm you're looking west. Yeah. So we're from looking the over from the youth. Are we at the youth centre? Yeah. Yes. The youth centre. Yep. Oh, okay, gotcha. So looking down the boulevard, this is the you know the sculpture which exists. Which is... And no cars can go there at all. It's just buses and train and the yes. train. Yep. And bikes. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. if any car needs to drop something off, they have to go through the Bradley Street. If you want to drop stuff off. Yep. Yeah. Essentially, yes. Bradley that, Street. That area. Yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Got you. Um, on to the next slide. This is a look from the corner of uh, Callum and Bradley as it heads um, as it heads west. So key corner. Um, looking down, Grand Central Towers in the, the background. Next slide. This is look essentially from Cullum offices, um, looking back towards the building diagonally. Again, a Cullum Street elevation, but but um, on the corner. Um, one of the features of the building is um, basically where you see this facade with what has a terracotta fin across it. It's a, it's a timber structure above, as opposed to a concrete structure. That um, for those that have seen those, they're they're really unique buildings and help us get a really great sustainability outcome. So there's a 59% uh, reduction in embodied carbon as a result of using timber in the structure. Um, next, uh, this is looking from, yeah, something's happening with the scale of that drawing, but um, that's looking from Bradley um, uh, on the south, um, southwest, basically yeah, the multi-story car park towards the taxi rank. That scale is something not right on that image because it, it's been elongated, but you, you get an idea of um, the so that's, architecture. That's a car park it, the public will have to use if they want to, and students who have cars. Will well, have that's, to use one that one. that's one of the car parks that exists. Yeah. That's not a car park. Yeah, that's the Westfield. Yeah, that's the Westfield multi story in that location. But you're rebuilding the Westfield car park because it doesn't look like mm. it right now. This is just. Oh, okay. just yeah, yeah. That's just in, yeah. indicative. Yep. Uh, and then this is into the youth foyer. So the youth foyer is um, one of the elements that we've worked, we've shifted significantly from where we were with our tender design and really been focused on creating a great home for, for the residents. So difference in architecture um, and have tried to make it more of a, you know, it's a, obviously a, it's a relatively small building and in comparison to the CRT building, you know, very small. So we felt it was important to be, 
interesting architecturally, have a different materiality and create a home for the students, as I mentioned before. So that's one render and on to the next. How many students have 16, 20, sorry, 20. So that's there, our lovely yep. West Plaza that's got such opportunity and yep. it's got dead fronts. Yeah, in, in a fantastic landscape, which has opportunities for activation through it, is the point I'd make that as well. One day in yep. the future, you might get your use for you now, but we will turn that into a street theatre in the future, mm -hmm. and you'll have to find somewhere else for your young people. You might as well find somewhere else for them now. Those kids will have to walk, they'll be great for graffiti in the future. Yeah, they'll be yep. great for graffiti, won't it? Oh, what good to have a use for uh, and this is going down. So this is a, an early indication. Some of the detailing here needs to be resolved. It's more indicative at the moment, but this is uh, basically where the restaurant strip is and an indication of the landscape design spilling inside and outside and looking through the, um, through the uh, uh, portal, through the building, heading back towards Callum Street. So that's looking um, uh, east. So that's in the... What's that, the afternoon or the morning? That's the afternoon. Summer yep. afternoon. Yep. This is another image looking down the um, kind of an elevated view, looking back down uh, again towards the east. Um, what um, you were mentioning before, Fiona, so we do have a rooftop uh, terrace up here. And then what you saw on the plan before was this area down here in terms of the landscape. So we've tried to create kind of a connection between ground floor and first floor in terms of how the building design responds. Okay. Is that going to be a green roof? Yeah, so this is this is green roof through here. And then there's a there's a terrace which um, comes out from the CRT building on level one as well. What do you mean by green roof? Is that a lawn? Is that a living roof? Yes. Right. Yes, yes. So it's it, it it is, open to the public? No, not up here. So this is a planted green roof, but it is a level high to try and create. We're basically trying to take the elements of the brief, which is to maximise green space and use the opportunities on the building to kind of extend the boulevard over the top of it. But it's not an accessible area. It'll be a planted roof. Isn't the um, CIT open so that the public can walk into the CIT? And what, what's why what's to stop the public from going in the CIT and, and walking on that? No, I'm just talking about this area here yeah. in the design is not designed to be accessed by anyone. It's literally a, a green roof. The balustrade provides an outdoor terrace on the building, and that is the that behind that balustrade is the area which gets access. So basically we identified an area on the building, which is a blank roof space. And we decided that by greening it, it tied in with the project objectives and trying to green the so public. it's not even generate. accessible to students? The green bit, no. This bit in here, yes. So that's not balustrated with the same No, so, the, yeah. so this is the maintenance. Like look, people need to maintain this, but it's not designed for access. It is a landscape, basically a landscape area on the roof. Ooh. Okay. Interesting. That's the last line. Was I more than 20 minutes, Bernie? Or? Yeah. Um, what, where is it at in the planning process? Are you at like P30, P30, P70, P80? So, what sort of, yeah, so where are you at? In Land Lakes Land, we don't talk about percentages, but we've basically finished a concept design. We've been through um, a process of going to uh, the National Capital Design Review Panel. So we've been there twice. And we are currently into our uh, second design stage, which is essentially the development of the DA design, which we're doing over the next um, two months. So this is the concept. We're not saying this is fully resolved. We, you know, are still obviously refining, changing. It's not perfect, but we think, um, you know, we spend a lot of time in 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 trying to respond to those project objectives and what we've heard from. You know, a range of stakeholders, including community. So, when you say you're at the second design, that's probably yeah. what sixty percent. I know you don't talk about percentages, but it oh, gives I'd, us. Uh, I'd say an our idea. DA does, so, if you said concept design was our DA design, will be thirty percent essentially. So, we right. go into design development after that. Right. We obviously, have a DA, you know, um, design at that point. But yeah, we're going to fifty percent design development, eighty percent design development, AFT, and then AFC. So, there's still yep. 
a lot of design work to go and there's some fine grained detail and a whole bunch of so, so resolution. So just going back, when would you like to have the DA? So our target submission date is mid November for the DA. Okay. Ben, can I just yeah. ask a question? Yeah. Um, when Minister Steele was being interviewed on ABC Radio last week yes. about his uh, plans for the whole Woden site, the question was asked, when are we going to get an indoor sports facility? And he st she stated that it will be incorporated as part of the CIT building. Can you please tell us where that will be? Where Can you tell us where that is going to be within that five stories? I can't comment on that. I didn't hear the... He made that statement, didn't yeah. he, Fiona? Yeah. Well, Absolutely. Um, and then he but then, yeah. yep. then the complex. <laughs> now that's going to be residential. It's a multi, um, multi function space within the CRT building for. It could be a range of events. It could be used for training. It could be used for presentations. It could be used for industry um, events. It is, by definition, a large function space that is intended to, to have flexible operations. A big meeting room. I wouldn't call it a big meeting room, but it's a, it's a multi-function event space that CRT could use for a variety of functions. On the parking, uh, this project is supposed to be replace Reed CRT, and currently Reed CRT has paid parking for students. Uh, I did want to ask, is there any uh, plans for extensions, uh, future extensions, like like of the, the Canberra? Building? Yes. There's, so as part of the building, there is a provision of future expansion space within it. So the envelope is being designed to um, accommodate for CRT's future needs. So it isn't being designed for extension physically, but extension within the building itself. And obviously, you know, the detail of our services design or what have you is being designed to accommodate changing teaching needs for CRT into the future as, as curriculum changes and what have you. Just wondering uh, if there's any building expectations, like the uh, Henry Hospital had or had, is that you? No, so there's no, as part of, as part of our brief, it isn't being designed to extend or you know make taller or or what have you it's it's setting a, a building envelope which then has internal space which is set aside for future expansion i'm also wondering if it, is there any consideration for a small supermarket on fronting the parking interchange at all um there's not a supermarket as such there is a brief function which is called the shop but that also um for instance, no different. It's a shop, but it'll serve like baked goods that are uh, that are cooked in the bakery and the teaching kitchens and whatever, what what have you. So it's not like a you know a, a shop like an IGA or something like that. All right, I think I better get off the stage, otherwise Bernie's going to drag me off. So I'll, I'll pass back to Bernie. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming because we really appreciate that. And as you can see, we got lots of questions. Thank you, Ben. Um, uh, James Cirillo from Community Services Director is coming to chat about the youth lawyer. Um, hello all. Uh, so I'm James Cirillo from Community Services Directorate. I work at Housing ACT in the Homeless and Services team. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself first. I also grew up in the Woden area. I was a Farrah boy and was in Farrah up until about 1994, where by then I up and moved and I went over to Gordon. Um, so fully appreciate the changing environment that's happening in Woden and how the landscape is changing. Um, from 98 to 2009, I was a small business owner. And in 2009, 2010, I joined a community service provider. 
uh, where I worked until 2015 when I joined ACT government. So um, I'm here today to talk about the youth foyer, but I, I've got to make it really clear, I'm not an architect, I'm not a um, designer, and I'm not a... Uh, uh, town, town planner. planner. I'm not. Who uh, is? Who's the town planner? Yeah, well, that, that's okay. Well, then lease. Um, no, they, they're only doing the building. Who's yeah. doing the whole town planning? I, I don't know. It's not me. Oh. <laughs> well, see, yeah. this is the problem. This is the yeah. opaqueness. We don't know. Yeah. Um, I Certainly, Fiona, I can take that on notice for you. Yeah. We yeah. want to know who's sure. planning this Woden renewal. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll take it on notice, no problem. Uh, I'm here today to talk to you about the four-year model and what a four-year is. Um, but before I do that, I think I want to talk to you about what a four-year isn't. Because when you hear the word youth and homelessness, often there's a real stigma attached to that. So I want to let you know that a youth four-year is not a refuge. Uh, it's not crisis accommodation and it's not a drop-in centre. It's a really unique model. Um, and I had the pleasure of managing a youth four-year from... 2011 up until 2014. And I'm not sure if people in the room know, but we've already got a youth foyer in Canberra. There is one already running. Um, it's not a true foyer, but it's a foyer-like model. So a lot of the learnings we got from that foyer, we've been able to incorporate into the, um, the not so much the design, but the principles of this foyer. And this is what we refer to as a true youth foyer. Um, I want to I've got some PowerPoints that I'll put up in a second. I don't have fancy screens or photos or anything to show you, but I've, I've got some points that I can certainly talk to. Um, I think most of us are familiar with what a refuge is. And a refuge is crisis accommodation for young people in critical need where they might be sleeping rough, they're on the streets and they need somewhere to sleep for the night or a week or a month. Um, and it's also not a drop-in centre. A four-year isn't for uh, young people to invite their friends to hang out and party. It's, it's not what it is. Uh, four years provide a point-in-time service that enable young people to transition and develop and achieve education and employment pathways. So that's the principle of the youth four-year. It's an education-based model. And to enter, young people need to agree that to stay there, you need to be engaged in, in education. Um, the youth foyer isn't new to Australia either. We've had them since about 2000, and they first appeared in Sydney, Melbourne. Um, I've got a slide. I think it's Adelaide as well was where they first appeared. But they're also worldwide as well. They're all across Europe, and the model is hugely successful in terms of some of the achievements of the young people. And Fiona, thank you before for saying that. Uh, you're not against the model. No, and certainly the community wants to support these young people. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm really passionate about the mm. model. I've got a couple of case studies I want to share with you later. Uh, names changed, of course, but I want to tell you about two young people that I fondly remember and what they achieved <clears throat> with <laughs> where they were before they arrived, where they got to when they left the foyer, and one in particular where she's at today. So I want to tell you a bit about those outcomes that we can get with the foyer model. Uh, the key in the model lies in the provision of stable accommodation. It's not, it's not long-term accommodation. It's what I would call medium-term accommodation. It's not short-term. Short-term for me is, is weeks, months. Uh, the average stay of a young person, in my experience, is between 12 to 24 months. Achieving your educational goals, um, being connected to the community, and then moving on with your life. So that's the goal of the youth model. Now, if we can achieve that, we've succeeded in supporting these young people achieve their goals as well. Much more than a supported accommodation service. I can talk to that, but I'm probably going to put that down, I think, and just talk to you about my experience. Um, youth foyers are supported. So there are agencies that come in and support the young people. Um, the one that I managed was co managed by two services who had to come together and develop policy and legislation and framework around um, how they were going to work together to support the young people bringing two different service providers together. Uh, and we've learned from that and there's a lot that we've taken from that. Um, some of the key components that we've learned from is 
connection to community, connection to transport, connection to education, and location of the foyer and the success of the foyer, that connection to education is absolutely critical. So can we pop the PowerPoints up? Already up. Um, here are some statistics, statistics across uh, Australia. I've got to tell you, when I entered community services, I was really taken aback, I think, by the amount of young people in Canberra that are doing it really tough. And by doing it really tough, I mean sleeping on the streets. Um, we, we look at the word homelessness and we begin to wonder what that means. Now, homelessness doesn't mean you're living on the street. Homelessness could mean that you're couch surfing at a friend's house. You spend two, night, two nights at one friend, two nights at another friend. And the question is, is that homelessness because you have a roof over your head? And to me, it is because they haven't got a stable place that they can call home and they can go back to every night after their work or after their school, um, if they're able to sustain that. So here are some stats across Australia. 27,500 young people aged 12 to 24 experienced homelessness. Uh, one in 10, not completed a year 12. That one surprised me. I thought that one would be higher. Uh, one in five leave school early. And once they leave, they won't engage any further with study. Uh, 526 people were supported in FOIA models. Seven in 10 stayed for at least 12 months. Average length of stay was 16 months. 62% of participants, 16 to 19, which in my experience is accurate. So I know the young people that came through the FOIA model that we were managing earlier, most were between 16 to 19. Uh, this one here is a worry. 52% came from family breakdown or domestic violence. Um, and certainly some of the young people that we used to support had some horrendous stories about what they experienced at home. They were unable to stay there and had to leave for their own welfare. Uh, one in seven, not already engaged in education. For the youth for you to be successful, young people must engage in education. Now we know that with some of these barriers, that's really difficult. Uh, young people experience a lot of different things, as I'm sure as parents we all know, and uh, isolation being one of them, family breakdown, domestic violence, uh, English as a second language, financial hardship, um, the, the list goes on. And I'm, I'm sure you're as familiar with some of those barriers as what I am. Uh, next slide. So the idea of the FOIA is that it closes the gap. The young people eligible for this program have to meet certain criteria. One of them is homelessness, the other, or at risk of homelessness. The other is they must be willing to engage in education. And the third is they have to be within age as well. Um, eligible for 16 to 24 year olds. There's no other service that delivers the, that delivers the same benefits as what a foyer does. Uh, it's the single most effective way to empower young people to enjoy a meaningful future. And the foyer model works to support education and then ideally into employment. That's, if, if we do that, we've succeeded as a community. Um, FOIA is unique. They're not a youth refuge or a drop-in centre. We've had a FOIA lot model on the ACT since 2011. This is the first true FOIA, and I'm really excited about it. We've learned a lot from the FOIA light model, specifically to engage disadvantaged young people and enable them to fulfil their educational goals. Uh, for the privacy of the young people, I'd, I'd rather keep that discreet. Yeah. Yeah, but it goes to show that um, very few people know it's actually there because it's so uneventful. Like the young people are there, they're supported by a service. Pretty boring, not much happens there. The young people are able to find their own way around town because they're close to transport. But that model itself, very rarely is there an event there. Yeah, it's discreet. I'm well, hoping to have events where they are, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I can tell you about some of the things that achieved that, and I'm happy to talk to you about what initially what didn't work, and then how we tweaked it a little bit to find things that did work. Yeah. Why is that 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I don't. I don't have an answer to that. Um, this is right in the corner road, and where yeah. we want to have events and markets yeah. and make noise and nightlife. Yeah. And I, I've got to tell you where the other foyer is. When, when I say discreet, it, it's not like it's tucked away in the back of some suburb. It's obvious. Where it is is obvious. Yeah. You just wouldn't know it's a foyer. Yeah. This is out there in public planning yeah. right now. So this, yeah. is, this is going to be kids are going to be known in the area yeah. really well, yeah. really quickly. Yeah. Very well. Yeah. And parents are notorious for labeling. Uh, youth foyers are in Europe. Started in the UK, they're in France, they're now across the US and Australia. Um, the design, th this is what we refer to as a fairly small to medium foyer. This has only capacity to house 20 young people. Um, they can go up to 35 or 40, if not bigger. So this is what we call a, a small to medium sized foyer. Uh, they have sleeping quarters. When I say breakout areas, what I mean by that is, I, I don't want to set the wrong impression. A breakout area is a small section on each floor where young people can get together and help help with study or socialising on each floor. It's not like a massive area where they can invite all their mates in and they can do what they need. It's a small little area that they can they can communicate with their with their fellow four years. Communal laundries, balconies. Um, and it's supported, and I really want to talk about this a little bit. Um, the young people aren't left there on their own. This model will go out to tender and service providers and agencies will be welcome to apply during that tender process to lead this for you. Um, I would think that this would be 24 hour support seven days a week. Now, does that mean that we have a raft of staff there all the time? No, because that's not what the foyer is either. It would likely be a couple of staff during the week um, and at least one staff member sleeping overnight. Um, so supported 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, the agencies do more than just stay there. So part of what the agencies do is they work to support the young people achieve some of their goals, connection to education, transport, assistance, uh, connection with services that they might need, connection with employment agencies, assistance with homework, um, budgeting, finances. Uh, I don't remember any young person that entered the foyer I was involved in that had a license when they arrived. So we organised um, uh, driving lessons, uh, put them through that, funded some, some other activities for them and just helped them become adults. Yeah. There's no parking there. Their cars. Yeah. Uh, yes. So th there is. I think that's in negotiation at the moment. I've got to, I've got to talk more about this. I know there's a few car spots there for staff. Um, I think the initial plan had five. I think that's under negotiation at the moment. I, I'm not sure about staff uh, car parking for young people. I don't, like Ben said, I don't think there is any at the moment. Because they're disadvantaged yeah. if they yeah. take up a job that's not on the public transport alignment. Sure. They can't get yeah. there. So you, yeah. they're disadvantaged straight away if they yeah. can't park. Yep. Yeah. And certainly we want to, address that so any disadvantage they're, they're disadvantaged enough so part of the goal for the four years is to minimize that and help them the best way we can to enable them absolutely yeah yeah and that's a really great point because we're not there to do things for them initially they'll need that support but the goal here is to help them become self-sufficient and yeah. how um does the community fit into this with the, the ability of the community to enable yeah. them Yep. to help them, support them, sure, take uh, them under their wing, mentor yep. them, yep. all that. There was a mentoring program that we established at this other four-year-like model. And for some of the young people, hugely successful. They connected with the people that volunteered to be mentors. Um, I know there was one young person that gained employment from their mentor and did very well with them. Then there are other, other young people that just didn't connect. So um, it does depend on personalities, as we know with young people, and it depends on uh, what their goals and aspirations are and if they align. But certainly the mentoring aspect was huge. Well, I'm sort of thinking more along the lines of having things to do because when yep. you're a young person, it's really handy if you've got things that yep. are, you can engage with like-minded people, sure. but there's no arts and culture in Woden. So we can't, 
is very difficult for us. The only arts and culture is private sector and it will cost them two and a half grand a year to go to be with like-minded people. And we don't have any indoor sports facilities, so we can't support them if they're ballers or they're, you know, we'd love to be able to absorb them into the community. And, sure. But we don't have the stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and that goes back to your point earlier that you spoke about. Yeah, public, public spaces stuff. where people come together. We want, you know, we want great stuff. Yeah. And sure. I think it needs to be talked about because yeah. putting the youth foyer right in the middle of what could be a great public space mm -hmm. for the broader community mm -hmm. and support the young people yeah. because there's music and, you know, yeah. it, uh, a, a, a create a, a sense of community and a sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. If you take all that away from us, mm -hmm. it's very hard for them to yeah. be absorbed into the community because where do we meet if we're not in a club? Sure. Yeah. 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 What sort of mental health support will there be for yeah. the for the young people and how do we ensure that it's not just sort of a, a yeah. private outpost of yeah I understand uh, I, I think it's a really important question mental health is a growing uh, obvious need in the community and I know a lot of young people are really struggling and I'm sure we're all aware of young people within our lives that are suffering with mental health as well uh, mental health can be as simple as um, you know young people feeling disconnected from their peers to some pretty serious mental health um, uh, conditions that really disempower and dis disable the young person to have the kind of life that they need. Um, the FOIA model relies very heavily on external supports and agency supports. Um, the Community Services Directorate covers a whole heap of different criteria uh, uh, agencies. Um, ACT Health and other service providers um, would be engaged to assist young people experiencing mental health conditions. Our goal there is to give them the connections they need to address whatever it is they're going through. And if that means mental health um, connections, this service provider should be able to do that as well. Not should, will. They will be able to do that as well. We're there to give them the holistic support that they need. Um, Again, again, important to remember that the youth foyer isn't a mental health facility. So that's that's not the purpose of it. Acknowledging though that some of the young people that will come in will have some barriers and they'll need some support to overcome those barriers. But it, it's not um, it's not a it's not a place that we're going to put them because they're just too hard for everywhere else. It, that's not the idea of the foyer. Uh, most young people that come through the foyer are um, disadvantaged at that point in time they're really struggling with life once they get the support they need and once they're aware of what their potential is I've got a couple of examples I'll share with you um, we find that the success of the foyer is immense it's immense it, it has changed literally paths and lives that these young people that have come through um, sure to the facilities. yeah there are, there are accommodation and sure. things and breakout areas, et cetera. Yes. Do you have communal kitchens? Because a lot of yeah. one of the basic things that most of these kids have probably never had the opportunity yeah. to yeah. do and are not going to have the income to do is go and buy takeaway all over Woden. It's going to cost them a fortune and use yeah. up all their money. You're yeah. going to give them communal kitchens. Yeah. There is a staffing area. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. CIT's right yes. next door. They've got a hospitality section that's going to be there. Yeah. Will they get a discount yeah. if they go to the cafes in the CIT because of yeah. their situation? Yeah. We've got to work all of that out. But I can tell you from my experience, what you've just said there is absolutely critical. So there is yeah. a communal kitchen for them the, to the, cook for themselves. So there is a staffing area where the stuff in the other foyer that I mentioned earlier there was this there was a unit that was devoted to staff and in that unit um young people would go and have dinners twice a week and breakfasts three times a week and that was all facilitated by staff i would like to think that this foyer is similar but what are they going to do all the other times because yep. kids have got to eat sure. they're growing so, that, they need to eat a lot course, more of course, and, and more often. Be negotiated with the service provider as well i'd, I'd right. like to think that all of those types of things there would be plenty of communal activities that they could do with staff in that setting, dinners being one of them. 
yeah, oh, it's really important for that community. Environment. So there's no specific community, even though they've yeah. got a breakout area, there's yeah. nowhere in that design. Uh, let me check. For communal yeah. kitchen. Like, I'll have to check that. Yeah, leave that with me. I'll have a look. Yeah. Uh, Michelle? Yeah. Yeah. I'll walk. No, they're going to walk over to Westfield. Yeah. 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 Well, they're open until nine o'clock, Willie. Oh. Well, it's dark. There's no lights on in the town square. Yeah. I'll just throw to Michelle for a second. Hi, hi everyone. I'm Michelle from yeah. the direct Community Services Directorate. I work with, with James. I just wanted to mention that as we're, we're sort of working through some of the design principles of the Youth Foyer building, uh, the accommodation will be sort of um, uh, that they'll have their own units um, with with their own bathroom yeah. and kitchenette so they'll have capacity to make meals in their own rooms but they'll also be communal spaces so shared spaces uh, as part of the design of the youth foyer that will be a will be like a common common room for the young people to come together uh, they'll be the youth foyer staff supporting them so so it'll it's um, a lot of consideration is being given to the design of the building to not only provide the young people with their own space, because we know that's important, that they need their own privacy and space. Uh, it's not shared accommodation in the sense they're not in a dorm or sharing rooms. They each have their own own bed sit and unit. Um, there's going to be some rooms that are uh, fully modified so that if there's students who have a disability that they can also um, be part of the youth foyer. Um, and then there will be the communal spaces, which are spaces for the young people to come together the services, there'll be a service provider on site supporting them. And as James spoke about, the role of that service provider will not only be to support each student or youth foyer student, but will be to create that sense of community within the youth foyer and to support the young people to come together and build not only their ability to study, but to build those life skills and to build those skills for independent living, which include sort of you know, the self-care and, and cooking and those sorts of things. Well, yeah. Did you? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. They're the basic skills they need and they need parameters. They need rules and regulations that they need what they call tough life. You wrap your arms around them and you say the hardest things possible. Mm. So, you know, yeah. I, and I, I'm not saying this clearly to everybody, but I work with the concrete system, yes. you know, and that's how you build a child's confidence. Yes. You teach them that because these kids haven't had this, yeah. um, and I didn't have it. Get kids from really yeah. disadvantaged families. I had them from silver spoon hours as they did. Yeah. So their parents yeah. were so occupied, all they did was throw money at them, and ended up breaking into houses yeah. and living with me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, like, it happens at both ends of the spectrum. Yes, it does. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. all sorts of abuse that yeah. happens in the home yeah. and neglect. Yes, it's it's, it's not, not just young people from disadvantaged backgrounds, backgrounds yeah, who, who find yeah. themselves. I, I think yeah. it's a really important point that you raise. I know that the services that are involved, um, uh, it's it's not like the young people are wrapped in cotton wool. Like there, there are um, challenging conversations that have to be had. And, you know, you, you've, got to, you've got to push them to achieve at times and sometimes the young person will be uncomfortable hey you've got to get to school four days a week five days a week you've got to complete this education how are we going to do that um you know because i'm tired today i'm not going to go uh we're going to work through that you've got 10 minutes to get ready i'm going to pick you up take you to school yeah those types of conversations um and they're the skills that we would expect from the service providers as well to have those challenging conversations with the young people knowing that at times they're not always going to be comfortable there, there are some difficult conversations that need to be had because um, we're also in the business of helping them grow and develop and become the people they're able to become. And you can't do that if you keep on doing things for them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Janet. Um, I want to go back to the location. Sure. Um, I think it's actually a critical question. Yeah. Um, and yeah. if there's not an answer for it, yeah. the only conclusion is that someone in government said, oh, that space is available, that looks easy, let's put it there. Okay. Uh, we need an answer to that, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and the other question is, 
has any consideration been given to, let's say there is a difficult conversation yeah. going on, somebody needs to be taken for a walk, sure. but you're in the middle of a shopping centre. How does that work? Where's the privacy? Yeah. I mean, this, uh, you know, how can you put vulnerable people in the middle yeah. of a fishbowl like that and mm -hmm. think it's a good idea? I do not understand. Sorry. Well, there's other options. So uh, um, I'll go back to um, the comment about this being a true FOIA model. FOIA models um, come in various forms. A true FOIA is connected to an education provider, uh, normally a TAFE. Yep. And in this case, the location of this being connected to a TAFE. And like Ben said, we've actually... I, I, I doesn't answer the question. There's plenty of other places that are connected to the TAFE. Sure. In the middle of the shopping How far away yeah. would typical... Would be? Would you have to be within mm -hmm. 20 metres of the education facility or... 30 metres, is that yeah. okay? Or yeah, I can't answer that. Yeah. I can't answer that question. Yeah. 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 But yeah. you're telling us they can only walk mm. across the road, that's too far from Woden Town Park. It's across the road, but that seems to be too far. Yeah. Why is it too far? Well, the orange is down the road as well. Like that's another education yeah. facility, but it's quite a ways from where that's going to be. Well, it's 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 than... Again, I, I, I need to I need to steer away from that comment and talk about what the foyer is, because that, that's why I'm here. I can talk about what it is and what it does. So I can't talk about um, why why it ended up with mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Sure. As someone who could have personally benefited from this sure. i am concerned somewhat about the numbers yeah. so in southern canberra alone i can i know 20 people personally who could benefit from this so just saying is what what I'd, I'd reckon to be more inclusive you need yeah. some more units um, places available but just wondering what where did you arrive on the number 20 yeah to be honest, I think the 20 came from the size that we have. So the, the footprint for the foyer being what it is, uh, was able to facilitate 20, 20 units. For the, and that, that's how they got to that number. Ha however, completely appreciate your comment that this, this foyer, youth centres, refuges, uh, public housing stock, we could have another 100, 500, and there would still be a need. Yeah. Um, hold on, did you want to say something? Oh, I was going to ask what proportion of the of the kids that who will uh, of the kids at risk would be accommodated in this? Because, but he sort of answered, you don't have an idea, you don't know, but it's small. Uh, how many? What proportion of the kids that at, at risk in that age group yeah. will, will couldn't be accommodated in this facility? So, at any given. At any given time, twenty. Yeah. Now I yeah. appreciate the answer is twenty, but the, yes. but do you have oh, any idea? How, yeah. Yes. I don't. I, I don't have that figure. Um, I don't even know where I could find that. Uh, and the reason I say that is, like I mentioned earlier, when I started working in community services, I was really surprised at the hidden number of, particularly young people, that just fly under the radar. Um, so to get those numbers, I, uh, I I would say it'd be high. There would be a, a large number of young people that would be able to use a facility like this. When you say large, yeah. do you yeah. mean like 100,000, yeah. 10,000? Yeah. Uh, I, give you an idea of that, I could probably contact um, the FOIA model I was involved in and get an idea of how many young people have been through over the past two years. That might that might give us an idea to pass to I don't have an answer to your question. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. no, I'm happy with Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I'm happy Yeah. 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 Oh, I also want to just just remind that. A foyer isn't a, isn't short term accommodation. So this is not young people that have had uh, an incident at home. It hasn't worked out, and they need somewhere to stay for a week or a couple of weeks or a month. And we know there are plenty of young people in that situation. 
um, the young people eligible for this are at risk of homelessness or are currently homeless and relationship breakdown, um, disconnection from community. So we're talking, we're talking some young people that really need the support of the foyer for medium term accommodation. And by medium term, average length 12 to 24 months, if they're still engaged, that might be negotiable. Yeah. Sending away is the most important sure. community services yeah. in, in, in all of the town centres yeah. to our politician for government. Yeah. Uh, what facilities would you like to see put in way that yeah. these kids can actually mingle with yeah. people? Now, I'm in Scouts, and sure. we lost things, and we actually yeah. have an outside way yeah. to do things. What facilities yeah. do you, would you like to see as part of the community so these people can be involved in the community? Mm -hmm. Part of what the foyer does is it consults heavily with young people. Um, and the model is successful when we take that input. So I, I could tell you about things I did when I was growing up, but times are different now and I'm much older. So what, what do young people need today to keep themselves um, entertained? Um, the consultation with young people around this project, uh, what they need when they enter the foyer, that, that would all be part of the discussion. I, I can't give you a solid answer on that now, but I know I know what you are saying. Yeah, yeah they do need that connection. Okay. Yeah, yeah. In the community, but sure. you know, we've lost a lot of mm -hmm. YMCA, was all yeah. sold off. We lose, we've lost all of those yeah. facilities. Yeah. Yeah, it's a wonder why you choose Woden when we've we don't have the facilities. Toganong's got facilities. I mean, we're happy to have them and we want it, but we want the facilities to go that we can help support these young people. Yeah. So there we are currently 2022 consultation and design phase, construction scheduled for 2023, tendering to the service in 24, four year opens 25 is the projected timeline that we're looking at. Sure. Yeah, they, yeah, sure. So, sorry, didn't catch it. Oh, is it? Oh, thank you. I'll put my hand up to take responsibility for that because I put it together and that's, that's on me. But thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll give you a couple of quick case studies. Um, so I'll just give you one because I know we're, we're running short on time. I'll, I'll tell you about Talia. Um, Talia came through the FOIA-like model when I was there. She came through in about 2012 and she was an uh, Indigenous young woman. She was 18 years old when she came in and she had a 12-month-old child at the time. Um, Talia had a relationship breakdown. She experienced what I would refer to as extreme domestic violence and was unable to sustain that relationship. Um, tried a few times going backwards and forwards and unfortunately um, her situation didn't improve. Got good for a little bit and then we know that in these types of circumstances it just perpetuates. Um, she was homeless for... going to say about six months she was supported by um, care and protection services um, her and her little one and eventually made her way over to the foyer um, Talia was engaged in education she was with a provider um, but due to her circumstances had to disconnect from that um, she started again when she entered the foyer I'm trying to cut her story really short because it's it's really complicated. So I'm trying to keep it as succinct as I can. She started again in her education provider. She finished her year 10. Um, she continued studying. She finished her year 12. She came up to me when she got her year 12 and she said, hey, James, look what I've got. I went, Talia, that's amazing. And Talia is not her real name, by the way. Um, I said, Talia, that's amazing. Congratulations. That's a huge effort. Um, and she said, no, you don't understand. So we'll what am I missing? This is huge. And she said, I'm the first person in my entire family to achieve a mutual certificate. And I said, do you mean your, your immediate family? She says, no, I mean, I mean my immediate and extended family. I'm the first one to get a year 12. Um, Talia went on to gain employment. Um, she, two years after she left the foyer, she got a job in the public service. She rang me two years ago to say that she's purchased her first house. Wow. Huge, huge. Um, 
Jamil is a little bit different. Jamil was from Afghanistan, 17 years old. English was a second language, um, was under the refugee settlement program. Uh, turned 18, no longer eligible for a couple of programs that he was involved in. Um, wanted to complete his education because he was passionate about being a physiotherapist. Finished his education, started studying, completed his degree in physiotherapy, whatever that might be called, um, and is now gainfully employed as a physiotherapist here in Tampa and has been for three years. Um, some of the, the life changes that have happened from a four-year are huge. These are two really simple examples. I could give you 20 or 30 success stories of young people that have been through a four-year model and succeeded. It's, it's a huge model and it works. Uh, it's not short-term, it's long-term. And there are... Um, the majority of these. All right, on that note. Thank you, James. I think it's, um, you know what, that's so exciting and, and it's a great area that you're working to be able to support and look after these young people. Yeah. Uh, I think it's really, really fantastic. Yeah, I, yeah, I am really passionate about yeah. it. And I heard a four-year model was starting. Um, I've been in various areas of housing. When I heard the four-year model was starting in Canberra, I've come over to the homeless to serve. I think I'm that passionate about this model. It's yeah. huge. I think yeah. that we're really passionate about it too. We sure. really want it to work and we want to be able to talk about what are the best um, circumstances yeah. or environment or planning that can support this model because I think that the yeah. the um the planning around it in the you know like you you've talked a lot about the youth foyer but sure. how it integrates with the rest of the community yeah. we want them to join the community and yeah. so how we do that sure. I think needs to be part of the conversation yeah yeah thank you Fiona thank you James all right um so we were going to have the community center, but it is now getting pretty late. So we're going to hold the, what is it? Time? Nine o'clock? Yeah, so we'll hold the um, community center over to, can you make that one big, Martin, the yellow one? We'll hold the community center over to um, next month because, you know, there's the interchange, there's all the planning around all this. Um, and, uh, you know, as far as supporting these young people go, we should not forget that Woden doesn't have much in the way to support young people. These are all the government owned arts facilities. And in Woden, we've always found it pretty tough to get uh, an art center or, you know, to, to get the community center or to get anything because all the buildings around our area are privately owned. And it's pretty hard to put a um, uh, public amenity into a commercial building because they want to make their commercial rates and often the public sort of amenity doesn't return commercial rates and so they won't do it so this is an opportunity this is a public building and this is an opportunity to have it bleed into the community as um ben was saying you know like with the north foyer how it opens up and bleeds into the um, North Foyer, well, it could be the same and we could create some great public amenity that supports everybody in the community and the young people. Anyway, on that note, thank you everybody for coming and um, we hope that this conversation continues before it's all finalised. Right. Facebook Live, is that the problem? I don't think Facebook Live is there. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, we can stop Facebook Live.